Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I'll show you how to use custom fonts in Tailwind CSS. So we'll look at using a third-party service like Google Fonts or have a self-hosted version of the fonts using the at font phase CSS at rule. Let's get right into it. All right, so here's the piece of UI we're going to be working with in this video. We're going to implement two custom fonts, one serif font for the heading tags, and then we're also going to use a monospace font that we're going to use for our three little code tags here, here, and here. First, I'll show you how to embed Google Fonts as it's a fairly popular approach. All right, so let's head over to Google Fonts, which has a very large collection of really interesting fonts. And here, since I know what I want to use, I'm going to use the search. And here for the serif font, we're going to use a font called Laura. So let me click on this. And here, since we want to use this for the heading tags, I'm going to come and select the bold 700 style. And now for the monospace font, I'll use a font called DM Mono, which looks really nice. So here, I'm going to use the regular and regular italic versions of it. So now I can come up here and I should have three fonts selected. Perfect. And you can see the instructions here to embed a font, we can copy the code into the head of our HTML document. So there's a link tag strategy and there's also an at import statement that you can use. Here we're going to use this double link tag. So let me copy this. And in our code, I'll come here at the end of the head tag and I will paste these two tags. Nothing has changed just yet here because we haven't actually used this font anyway. Back in Google Fonts, if I scroll down, you can see that to use this font, I can declare the font family to be DM Mono or Laura. So let's come in our CSS file. And while this is not what we're going to do, one thing you could do is use the at layer base and say, I want the font to be applied to everything. So on the body tag, I would apply font family and inside of quotes, Laura, and then serif. So this is going to blanket apply the LoRa font to absolutely everything within our body tag, and that's not what we want. Of course, we could be more specific and say we want the H1 and H2 tags to have the LoRa font only. And now it works like we want, but we're still missing on a lot of the flexibility and power that comes with Tailwind CSS utility classes. So instead of writing custom CSS here, we're going to create a new custom font family utility class to use this LoRa font. So let me delete all of this and I'll come in our Tailwind config file and here we're going to extend the font family object. Inside here, we're going to create a new key and we could call that brand or custom, but here I'll just go with Laura and here we're going to have our Laura in single quotes and serif. So that's going to generate a font dash Laura utility class for us. Cool, so let's try that. And let's say we wanted to recreate this blanket apply on the body tag. I could come here and go class font dash Laura. And you can see that this class has created a font family of Laura and Serif. And if I look at our project, everything once again has the Laura font just like before. But now we have much more control and power because of this utility class here. We can use this on any element in our markup and we can also use all the variants like a breakpoint variant or a hover variant that Tailwind comes with. All right, so we're going to remove this from the body tag and instead we're going to apply it to the H1 here, font Laura. And let's come down and find the other heading, the H2 here, font Laura. And now only our two headings are using this font, but like I mentioned before, we have much more power and we can use any variant. Say for example, that in our H1 tag at the top, we only wanna use the font Laura at the large breakpoint and up. You can see that now it's using Laura because we above the large breakpoints, but if I open the dev tools and make the viewport smaller, you can see that before that breakpoint, we're using the default system font. And that works with every variant in Tailwind. So not sure why you would do this, but you could do on hover, use the font Laura. And now the Laura font only shows when we hover over the heading. All right, let me undo this. And now we're going to use the other custom font, the DM Mono monospace font for the code tags here, here, and here. Back in our config file in the font family object, I could create another font family, DM. And this one would be DM Mono, Mono, space. Let's go and find our first code block here, which is right here. And we'll add a new utility class font DM, which as you can see, sets the family to DM mono. And it's being applied here. 
Since we also installed the italic version of the font, let me quickly add the italic class. So it's a little bit more obvious uh, that this is the custom font and you can see it looks really good. Okay, but now let's say that we want in our project to always use this DM Mono custom font. Any place where we would have the font mono stack that comes with Tailwind CSS by default, we want to use this custom font here. So if I replace this font DM with the font mono, you can see that by default, Tailwind provides this font family stack of UI, Monospace, SF, Menlo, Monaco, and a few others. And so that would be really nice to keep all these fonts here and then prepend our DM mono at the top of the list. So let's delete this DM and instead target the mono and see what happens if I just have the DM mono font. So right now we have completely wiped out the monospace font stack. We definitely don't want to do this. And turns out that you can define font families in the config file as an array. So here, what we want to do is have an array where the first item is our DM mono. And then we want all the other fonts to follow here. So we want to use the spread operator here and then find a way to use the other monospace fonts here. Up the top, I will go const default theme equals, and we're going to require tailwind CSS slash default theme. And now instead of my placeholder other monospace fonts here, we can go into this default theme. And then in there, we're going to reach for the font family dot mono. And if we inspect our font mono utility one more time, you can see that this time we have the DM mono Google font followed by all the other fonts, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so now our font works here and you might notice that it actually works here and there already as well. And the reason for that is Tailwind in the base layer defines the code stack to use the monospace font stack. So now we've updated this font stack and the first font that it receives is DM mono. So that means that I actually don't even need to use the font mono here in the first code tag because it's going to use that by default. All right, so now our Tailwind project here is working with two custom embedded Google fonts. Now let's take a look at how we can self-host these fonts instead of relying on a third-party service like Google Fonts. And for this, we're going to use the at font face CSS at rule. I'm going to remove the two link tags, which means that we're going to lose our custom fonts and now uh, we have the fallback versions coming in. Okay, so when you wanna host the fonts yourself, the process is essentially to have the fonts somewhere on your directory and then write some CSS that describes how to find this font, how it's called, how it should look and where to find it on the directory tree. And I've prepared a fonts folder that has the WOF and WOF2 variants of our LoRa 700 and then DM Mono Italic and DM Mono Regular and there's a few different formats for fonts. And these two, WOF and WOF2, are mostly supported in major browsers and in many cases are sufficient. So we're going to put that folder in our project directory here. And since I'm using Vite for this project, oh, and actually, it's Vite. The convention in Vite is to use a public directory in the root of your project for static assets. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'll quickly create a new folder called public. And then I'll drag my fonts directory in there. Okay, so in our CSS file, let's open a base layer. And here we're going to use the at font face CSS at rule. So one of the properties that this font face rule needs is the font family. And it's essentially how you want to name the font and refer to it. So if I have my font here, then in the CSS, let's say we had an H3 somewhere, you would go font family and then something like my font sans serif, for example. And if the name here matches that font, that's the font that's going to be used. Okay, so let me delete this. So here we're going to use Laura as the name. And let's keep going. So another property that we can give is the font weight. And here it's going to be 700 because our Laura font is 700 in weight. You can also specify a font style, which could be italic or normal, etc. But normal is the default. So here we can remove that. Let's add one more and very important property, the source. Essentially, it's telling where to find the font in our directory tree. So here we can have a URL. And in our case, we're gonna go with an absolute path from our public directory. So slash fonts slash, and it's called laura-700 and we're gonna go with WOF2. And we also need to specify the format of the font. In this case, it's WOF2. Now we can specify more than one font file here in the source. Remember, we wanna support WOF2 and WOF. 
And so we can have a comma separated list. So I'll grab the first URL here and paste it a second time, but this time woof2 is gonna be just woof. Okay, so with that, we've defined a new font called Laura, which is 700 in font weight and is located here. So if we look at our design now, so if we look at our design, you can see that it's working. We're using the Laura font in both our heading tags. Beautiful. Let's do the same for our DM mono font. So we have the regular and the italic versions. So I'll come here and I will duplicate this whole block. This one is going to be called DM mono. The font weight is going to be 400. We don't need a font style for the regular version. And for the source, we're going to replace Laura 700 with DM mono. And let's duplicate this one more time. And this one is going to be also DM mono, font weight 400, but the font style will be italic and the source will be dm-mono-italic. And yep, yeah, it's working beautifully. We have here the italic version and here the normal version. And so now we're hosting these fonts ourselves, which is a really good solution if you wanna save an external network request, or if your font is not available on the third party service, it gives you a lot of control in house, how you name the fonts, how you load them, etc. And it's a really useful technique that is fairly easy to apply once you understand it. And that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm looking forward to see you again très très vite. Bye for now.